previously. After receiving a baby Horus as a gift from Commander Tristan, Princess Lulin got flustered, reflecting on what a loving person the Duke is to give her a baby bird. Moreover, when the Duke caringly gave an ointment to apply on her scar, she complied and took it embarrassingly. However, later that night, the princess unwillingly attended King Bastion's party, where Queen Pamela became a party pooper who interfered with the princess. So, let's dive into the chapters 27 and 28 of the Manwa, the secret bedroom of the Forsaken Princess. Listening to Queen Pamela's false allegations, Princess Lulin lowers her head and apologizes to her. To this, the audience in the background starts criticizing the princess for not even arriving at the party with a small gift. Queen Pamela joins them, asking if the princess is revolting because she was not given enough pocket money from the royal family. Moreover, with a chilling expression, she adds whether she has forgotten what happened in the past with her. At which, the princess responds that she has no intention of such a thing. Further, with a silence for a bit, she considers her past memory when Pamela was lawfully crowned as Queen of Brigent, and Bastion's status as an illegitimate child was also nullified. Furthermore, at that time, the princess brought a crystal golden raven statue as a gift for Bastion's 19th birthday, for which she even had used all of her remaining fortunes to acknowledge Bastion's legitimacy. However, Queen Pamela without any hesitation, smashed her gift into pieces, and she did not even apologize for her act at that time. Yet, the king crashes between them, asking his mother to stop with her statements against the princess. By making an annoying face, Queen Pamela states that since the princess wearing that dress, she will kindly let her off the hook today. She then approaches the princess, speaking that her late mother really loved the dress she is wearing. In response, the princess snickers and ponders if she should be glad to have worn this dress. Eventually, the banquet hall echoes with a loud voice, requesting a sudden meeting with Queen Pamela and the King Bastion, which shocks them visibly. However, the audience's gaze abruptly turns in the direction of the princess, who is perplexed at their reaction, but on noticing that they are looking at someone standing behind her. The princess also turns back, and, finds a young blonde lady sitting on the floor. Dear viewers, apologies for the interruption. If you're genuinely enjoying the content on this channel, please consider hitting the subscribe icon with all notifications, since this little support of yours will help this creator continue delivering high-quality work to brighten your day. And take a moment at the end of the video to leave a comment, sharing your thoughts on the content. Your feedback means a lot. Now, let's not take up too much of your time and jump back into the story. Seeing the lady, the audience starts whispering among them, remembering that she is Lady Vivian, the daughter of Count Mode. Besides, asking each other about what she is holding in her arms. As Lady Vivian removes the cloth, it is revealed that she is holding a blonde baby in her arms. Witnessing this scene, the surrounding audience mumbles among them why Lady Vivian brings a baby to a place like this. In an instant, Queen Pamela shouts how dare Lady Vivian is to cause a commotion in this banquet party. To this, Lady Vivian responds that she is deeply apologizes for the disturbance she caused. However, she adds that she has to bring this truth to light even if she has to disturb this event. After this, she pauses in hesitation for a bit, and, by mustering confidence in her eyes, she raised the baby up in the air, declaring that this baby of hers is the son of King Bastion. Listening to this, the princess and the queen gets visibly surprised by this sudden revelation, on top of which, King Bastion becomes shocked, contemplating the authenticity of Lady Vivian's statement, and, mutters to himself about the legitimacy of the child. With the revelation of Lady Vivian, the whole banquet hall falls into deep silence. The princess wonders about what Lady Vivian just said, and asks herself if she should believe that her brother, the king, is the father of an illegitimate child. With a feverish face, the queen utters that what Lady Vivian means with the king's child. Moreover, by not being able to control his composure, the king furiously yells, stating that the accusation she is labeling at him is totally false. Noting the king's reaction, the side audience noises among them that could the baby really be his because it totally resembles him. Besides, by glaring at her helplessness expression, the king gets more annoyed. The princess, at seeing him trembling, ponders that the king has to maintain his composure in front of the audience. On the other side, Lady Vivian informs everyone that she come from the Mode family, and she had met the king two years ago where they spent a night together, resulting in which she got pregnant with his child. By interfering, the queen inquires why Lady Vivian did not come right away with the baby. To this, she replies that she was afraid that time because how dare she bear the king's child. Plus, that night, the king told her that he does not want to have a child. Therefore, he threatened to her that if she conceives his child, he would kill both of them right away. And, as the king tries to prove himself innocent in this matter, he halts for a second and turns in the queen's direction. The queen, after maintaining her tranquility for a bit, she orders Lady Vivian to come forward with the baby, upon which she complies with the queen's word, and slowly starts to approach towards them. 
even this cute baby wants to introduce. Hence, he turns his glowing face towards them. Seeing the baby's resemblance to the king, the princess and the queen are taken aback visibly. Further, they gauge that the baby has blonde hair with white and chubby cheeks. Besides, the same clear blue eyes just like King Bastion. The baby then deliberately gazes towards the king, with a cute giggle on his elegant face. Noting the baby's action, the king expresses a disgusting look. The princess deeply ponders that it is certain that the baby looks like the king, even though he resembles Lady Vivan. With tears in her eyes, Lady Vivan pleads him to make his decision sincerely because she does not want to raise him alone. And, by sobbing, she tightly cuddles the baby, adding if he does not do it, then the baby will grow up without knowing his own father. Witnessing Lady Vivan's desperate pleads, the audience mumble among them that on looking at the child from near, he does resemble the king. Suddenly, Queen Pamela extends her hand near the baby's foot, and, gets shocked at discovering the same moles on the child's foot, just like the king in his young age. With this, the surroundings fill a silence, after which, the queen orders weeping Lady Vivan to raise her head. And, she reminds Lady Vivan that her Mode family helped the queen a great deal when she was yet to be married, so she will not forget their kindness. Therefore, she declares that from now on, Lady Vivan will become the prince's mother. Listening to the queen's decision, she starts to sob, stating that she will be grateful to her for the rest of her life. Whispers continues among the audience, asking one another about how the queen can acknowledge the child as the prince of the brigent without establishing his paternity. However, they realize that they have to respect Queen Pamela's decision because she is the rightful queen of Brygent. Eventually, the king calls his mother with a loud voice. With a disappointed expression, the queen turns to his direction, and she asks the king to stop his stupidness and suggests him to display his responsible appearance in the name of the king. By trembling heavily, the king shifts his feared gaze at the princess. Besides, when the princess shockingly glances at him, he agitatedly starts to convey to her that he is innocent and tells her that Lady Vivan is conspiring against him. But the queen rebukes him, stating to maintain his composure in front of the royal audience. Shaking like a leaf, the king continues his stares at the princess, who reflects that she cannot respond to him right now. Because, if that child is the prince, then the princess will be seen as an obstacle to his succession to the throne, so that, she cannot say anything reckless regarding this to maintain her safety in the Brigent Kingdom. And, as the princess refuses to stand in favor of him, the king feels betrayed and becomes alone in his own birthday party. By tapping her hand fan, the queen lifts a wine glass, expressing loudly that they discovered the biggest gift for the king's birthday party. So, asks them to cheer for that by welcoming the king's legitimate child into the royal family. To this, a surge of congratulations starts coming to Lady Vivan. Seeing this, the princess contemplates that now the baby acknowledged as a prince, everyone here is trying to win the favor of the next heir to the throne. And, with a tired mood, she adds that now everyone's attention is directed at the prince, then she can go back to her room now. However, she feels a swift shock through her whole body due to the activation of the Asmodeus stigma. By staggering, she asks herself if is it that time already for the activation. Furthermore, a person approaches the princess from behind by calling her name, none other than Duke Almondite, who states that he has something to talk to her in private, resulting in which, the scene shifts to a dark room, where the duke is in great trouble removing the glove from his hand. Finding herself alone with the duke, the princess considers that she remembered everything about what happened that day, but this would not change anything, because the one who spent that night with the duke was not the princess, but was just her curse, and... Despite she had intimate moments with him unknowingly, she does not regret it since she was able to hurt him when he was supposedly happy by recklessly rejecting his engagement proposal. Noting the princess lost in her thoughts, the duke asks about what the princess will do now due to her being further pushed back in the succession line by the king's illegitimate child. At which, she responds what else she can do except just staying quiet and leaving this place when the time comes. By clasping the glove in his hand, the duke states that her life will be in danger if she does nothing about it but leave. The princess then annoyingly replies that if the duke wants her to kill that newborn child and take his place, or if he wants her to directly kill his brother first, affirming her words, he suggests her to do this because if they will not get killed, then she will be the one who is going to die. To this, she furiously shouts at him, asking how dare he can think to plot against her brother. However, the duke intervenes, stating that if she does not want to do this, then is she really thinking of living in the monastery? The princess responds that she is sure it would not be worse than living in the capital. Her reply prompts a deep silence in the surrounding for a bit. Nevertheless, the duke suddenly presses the princess against a table by announcing that what if that place is more of a living hell in comparison? And, he yells, adding what will the princess do if she finds more callous people at the monastery, who will make her life more hell than here? As we wrap up today's segment. Thank you for being with us until the very end. I'll be sharing fresh videos of this manga and exciting new series every weekend. 
Your support is invaluable, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated. Your encouragement keeps the channel thriving, and I appreciate it immensely. Until next time, take care and goodbye.